Hey young friends, Dr. Bill here. As always, I'm really glad that you've chosen to spend a few minutes of your time with me. We're continuing our series of big names in the Bible. And today we're going to take another look at Daniel. Today's lesson comes from one of the most familiar stories in the entire Bible, and certainly one of the most familiar stories in the book of Daniel. It has to do with Daniel and his three friends, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, in the fiery furnace. Here's how the story goes. Daniel tells us that one day the king decided that he would build a great statue, a very tall, very high statue, and it would be covered uh, from the very top to the very bottom in solid gold. And the idea was is that whenever the music sounded, everybody was supposed to stop what they were doing. They were supposed to fall to the ground, kneel, and worship this golden object. Well, once that statue was completed, one day the music sounded and everybody fell to their knees and they worshiped the golden statue. Everybody but Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Now they refused to bow down. They refused to worship the golden statue. Because they were very open and upfront about this, they didn't try to hide, didn't try to conceal themselves, didn't sort of halfway bow and worship the statue. They just didn't do it at all. Well, because they refused to worship, they were reported and they were brought before the king to answer the charges made against them. The king said, why did you not worship the golden statue? And Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego said, we are Hebrew people and we believe that there is only one God and that God says that we should worship him and him alone. We're not to worship any other idol or any other image. Well, the king heard this and he was very angry. And so he said, I'm going to punish you like I, said, like I indicated that I would punish anyone who refused to worship. I'm going to have you thrown into the fiery furnace where you'll be burned up. What do you have to say to that? Well, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego said to the king, We believe that our God can deliver us. We believe that if God so chooses, He can rescue us from the fiery furnace. But then they went on to say, But even if God does not deliver us, we still will not bow down. Wow! Even if God does not deliver us, we will still not bow down pretty impressive. Well, sure enough, the king had his, his soldiers and all of his uh, functionaries. He had them to heat up the fiery furnace to make it as hot as it had ever been. And they threw Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego into the, into the furnace. Well, the king wanted to see these three burned alive. And so he took a look into the furnace and he was astounded. He saw Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego not burned up by the fire. He saw them walking around in it, walking back and forth. And amazingly, there was a fourth figure in the fire, a fourth person in the fire with them. Now, Daniel tells us about that fourth figure because that's his way of saying that God was in the furnace with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Well, the king was very impressed by this, and so he had Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego taken out of the fiery furnace, and he commended them for their faith. Now, this is a very, very important story for a number of reasons. First, it's a reminder that we are to worship God and God alone. Anytime we make something more important than God, well, we've made it an idol. 
An idol doesn't have to be something covered in gold. It doesn't have to be a statue. It can be anything that we elevate and say, this is really more important than God. God said in the Ten Commandments, you will have no other gods before me. And what that means is that our devotion to God is supposed to be the number one priority in our lives. We're to worship God and worship God alone. Second lesson is this. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego believed that God could deliver them from the fiery furnace. And indeed, all of Scripture, the entire Bible, is filled with stories about how God delivered His people, how God got His people out of hard places, difficult places. But interestingly, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego said, we believe God can do that. But even if God doesn't do that, we still will not worship this idol. We will still hold fast to God. Wow, that's pretty impressive. They were saying, listen, even if God doesn't come through like we hope God will, we will not bow down. We will not abandon God. Now, I have an idea. Most of us think that God is pretty much uh, available to us to do everything and to make our lives easier. And sure enough, all of us have experienced times where God came through for us and blessed us and did wonderful things for us. But there's some times where God does not come through as we hoped or as we expected. And that's when we find out if our faith is really strong. That's when we find out if we follow God because God blesses us or we follow God because God is God and worthy of our worship. Will we follow God if God doesn't come through like we hope or expect? And then the final lesson is this. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were not alone in that fiery furnace. Daniel tells us the king saw a fourth figure in the fire with them. Again, that was Daniel's way of saying the presence of God was with them in the fire. Now, most of the time we think God's job is to get us out of the fire. But Daniel reminds us that God's presence with us in the fire, in the things that are hard and in the things that, that test us, that's really the most important work God does. God can walk with us through the hard places, the fiery places, the places where we're tested. God's presence often works from within instead of trying to take us out. God is with us in difficulty and not necessarily working to get us out of something. That's an important lesson. God with us in the midst of our trouble and our difficulty. Well, that'll do it for today. Again, I'm really glad that you joined me. And as always, if you have any questions, you can send me a text, give me a phone call, send me an email. I'll be glad to sit down with you anytime and answer any questions that you might have. I hope that you're already enjoying your summer break and I'll look forward to seeing you again next week. In the meantime, take care and God bless. Bye-bye.